Okay, so we are going to begin with a brand new chapters where we are going to begin with uh, chemical bonding. So let's have a look of the content of what we are about to learn. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about ionic bonding, covalent bonding, metallic bonding, and also intermolecular forces, which is van der Waal forces and also hydrogen bonding. So now, uh, through the passive question analysis, you can see that uh, chemical bonding is one of the very basic uh, chapters that you all have to understand. Okay, so with that hesitation, let's have a look at the contents of what is the uh, chemical bonding. So uh, generally, uh, inside of periodic tables, there are three possible interactions between elements. There are these interactions between metals and non-metals. There are these interactions between non-metals and non-metals. And there are these interactions between metals and metals. So later you are going to see that most of the, most of the interaction between metals and non-metals involve the transfer of electrons to the other non-metal atoms, so, uh, which eventually form an ionic bond. Between the non-metals atom, they will share the electrons in order to achieve octet arrangement, so therefore they will form what is so-called as covalent bond. And in between metal, each of them will delocalize electron to form an electron C where the metal ions are interacting inside them. So for this bond, we call it as a metallic bond. So let us understand one by one what does each of these bonds mean. A Lewis dot symbol consists of the symbol of an element and one of dot for each balanced electrons in the atoms. For example, previously we have learned that hydrogen has a balanced electrons of one, so hydrogen has one dot. Helium has a two electrons, so helium has two dot. Uh, lithium, which is from group one, has one dot. Beryllium, two dot. Boron from group 13, three dot. Carbon from group 14, four dot. Nitrogen from group 15, five dot. Oxygen from group 16, six dot. Fluorine from group 17, seven dots. And neon from group 18, eight dots. Okay, so singles with the sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Okay, so other than dots, you can also use other symbols such as a cross or your circle like this. Okay, so these are the representations of electrons for each element inside the periodic tables. So the central of the ionic bonding model is the transfer of an electron from a metal atoms to non-metal atoms to form ions that comes together in a solid ionic compound where ionic bond is formed in between oppositely charged ion by electrostatic attraction forces. So let's say for example in the formation of sodium fluoride. So sodium fluoride originally is from sodium atom and fluorine atom where sodium atom has the electronic configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1 while fluorine atom has the electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So when one of the electrons from the 3s is transferring its electron to one of the electrons inside the 2p of the fluorine then we say that a cation, a cation will eventually forms by the sodium, whereas fluorine will eventually form fluoride ions. So this will make both sodium ion and fluoride ion to achieve an octet arrangement of 2s2 to b6. So in terms of the Lewis diagram, we draw this is how we are going to express them. So sodium, which has one valence electrons, donate the electrons to the fluorine atom to form a sodium ion and also fluoride ions. So most of the time, when we are expressing for the ionic compound, so uh, this is what we are going to express at the end of the day. So the interaction between sodium atom and fluorine atoms occur when sodium atom, usually with uh, is an element with low ionization energies, donates electron to fluorine with high electron affinity to form sodium ion and fluoride ion respectively. Note that both ions has achieved octet arrangement of NS2 and B6 as it is the most stable form of an ion form. So the oppositely charged Na plus and F minus form a giant ionic crystal lattice with a very high melting point by electrostatic attraction forces, which later we shall introduce. So other examples of substances that form ionic bonds are, for example, magnesium chloride (MgCl2), potassium oxide (K2O), calcium sulfide (we have CaS), and then aluminium oxide (Al2O3). So this is how we are going to express their Lewis structure for each of the respective ions involved. 
Now we are going to learn about the physical properties and what are the factors that influence ionic bonds. Now according to Coulomb law, electrostatic energy between the two oppositely charged substances, let's say A and B, is directly proportional to the charge carries, yet inversely proportional to the distance between them. So the electrostatic energy, or which is also measured by Lattice energy, is directly proportional to the charge of the oppositely charged ion and also inter-ionic radius. So this relationship helped us to predict the trend of the lattice energy and explain the effect of ionic size and charge. So in general, we say that uh, as we move down to a group, the ionic radius increase, therefore electrostatic attraction between the cation and anion decreases. Uh, because the interionic distance eventually become greater, thus the lattice energy of the compound should decrease as well. So this prediction is borne out by the alkali metal halide. So note the re-regulations of the lattice energy when going down to the group. Okay, so this is the tables that you can see in here, where all of them has the same charge. Okay, however, with the increase of the uh, cationic size, so the lattice energy eventually decreases. Same goes with the anions. So all of them has the same side, same charge of negative, but with the increasing of the anionic radius, the lattice energy is also decreasing. <coughs> so effect of the ionic charge. So when compared to lithium fluoride with magnesium fluoride, we find out that cations with about equal radii, where lithium ions have the radii of 76 picometer, while magnesium 2 plus has the radius of 72 picometer. And then an ion about the equal size, fluoride with 133 picometer and oxide ion with 140 picometer. Thus, the significant difference of these ions, lithium fluoride contains a single charge, whereas magnesium oxide contains a double charge. So therefore, you can see that the lattice energy of the lithium fluoride is, great, is smaller than the magnesium oxide, where it, the, the numbers uh, of, is four around four times greater compared to the lithium fluoride. So this can be explained based on the electrostatic uh, charge just now. Okay, okay. So some of the properties of ionic compounds include melting points. So ionic compounds has giant ionic crystallities, which holds by electrostatic attraction forces between the oppositely charged ion. Thus, the melting point of the ionic compounds are usually very high, as a lot of energy are required to overcome electrostatic attraction forces and melt to for, uh, and melt too from free moving ions. Therefore, ionic compounds have a very high melting point. As for the sense of electrical conductivity, most of the ionic compound in solid does not conduct electricity, but when the when uh, but it do conduct when it is molten or uh, when it is dissolved in water. So solid ionic salt contain immobilized ion. When it melt or dissolve, the ions are free to move and carry electrical currents. So in the diagram here, you can see that. So this is the effects of when you have ionic salt as a solid. So all of them are arranged in three-dimensional arrangement and where all the ions are not free to move. However, once this salt is molten, so they will have free moving ions around them and this will enable them to conduct electricity or you dissolve them in water also enable them to conduct electricity. As for the hardness and brittleness of ionic compounds, so all ionic solids are hard, uh, rigid and brittle. These properties are due to the power attractive forces that holds between the ions, specifically the position through the crystal. So moving the ions out uh, of the samples require position of these forces. So the samples resist denting and bending, so enough pressure is applied. So you can see that uh, when you have external forces knocking down on it, so the charge is slightly to repel, hence crack. So that is why most of the ionic compound, even though they are hard, but they are brittle due to these forces. Okay, okay. So with this, this will be the first part of our video lessons. So I'll continue on the next one later. Thank you.